over here in the red at the top right. Named after Slayer's boxer himself, the scene calls him Boxer. I saw. In the blue, a delicious drink, an amazing Zerk player. He is the one, the only. Nasty. Thought that intro was going to come a little bit quicker than it did. It's okay, Chase. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Um, you know, Nesty, it is a delicious drink. Maybe not as good as Powerade, though. One of our not sponsors. Not as good as our sponsor, Powerade. Okay, hold on. Hold up. Here we go again. <laughs> Barracks on low ground. He's doing it again, Artosis. I know, man. It's This is the way he likes to play. And it looks like he's going to just wall in with some barracks and stop any 14 hatches that go down. But there seems ST to be this, this game. Yeah. He's being a lot smarter than that. He's going 14 gas, 13 pools, we see. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean and to cut you off back there. I was just going to say, it just it seems like he's just not comfortable playing Nesty in the late game. Yeah. I mean, Nesty's decisions just get better and better with time. They're like a, a fine wine or a good cheese. They are. Yeah. I put up my Twitter account. But you know, Nesty, Star he don't whine when he's cheese because he makes <laughs> enough Zerg lingies. <laughs> I, I put up my Twitter and said, StarCraft ages like wine while most FPS games age like milk. <laughs> I do believe it's a true statement. That's right. Except Quake 3 became cheese. <laughs> you like that? That's deep, man. We got double barracks again. Now, of course, Nesty can't go hatchery first. And if you're a newbie in your home and you're wondering why, of course, can you not do that? You're just too close to each other. Yeah. So you have to go for the spawning pool first. Otherwise, you're going to get bullied, possibly forced to have your expansion uh, canceled. It's just bad news all around. Yeah, that's right. Now, the speed Zergling first build, uh, he's going to be in really good shape against this. And in fact, ooh, he chases the SCV out, and guess what he does after that? Uh, he makes the roach warrant. Yeah, that is exactly what he does. Now he's going to have speedlings and to roaches. Oh, nice. And ooh, locking him in there. That's kind of gross. Now, uh, the best way to take out exactly what's going on here, he's already making the roach warrant, he's already getting zergling speed. There is a good number of zerglings. He's getting double bunkered in. If he makes five banelings and busts through and then runs to his opponent's base with the roaches and rallies behind speedlings, that's nearly unstoppable in this exact situation that we're in, this really weird one. I've played it a lot of times. So I'm just letting you know. Now he does have SCVs and Ranger. He wants to be able to peek up the ramp to see uh, if, if there are, in fact, banelings on the way. Oh. But he's going to do a little bit of scouting. Queen moving out now. Now he's got to be careful. He's too far in there when speed finishes. Suddenly there can be a surround on those Marines, and he might lose them. Speed is done, or about to be finished. Terran, no gas, no expansion. Roach is soon to be out. Still there. You know, if he just overwhelms these two bunkers, uh, Boxer's going to be in a huge amount of trouble. And he sees the Roaches now. He knows, he knows. And here come the Zerglings. Oh, They're going to try to surround. surround. And look at that, traps those Marines. No SCVs left as well. A lot of Marines going down, and these Roaches are going to easily crush out of here. Boxer, too aggressive that game. And it looks like he's going to be in trouble, Tasteless. He's going to take this bunker out, take the Marines out. He backs up, but he wants to just get rid of this one bunker. If he can just get rid of this one bunker and regroup. And now he, really he's, he should really attack that before it gets salvaged. It does get salvaged in time. That's right. Now, a lot of speedlings are being rallied in as well. Now, we're going to have to see. Can he bust through here? Two bunkers are being made. If he can get those Marines in the bunkers, he should be fine. But, oh, it looks like he may, in fact, be OK. But it looks like Nesty, man, he's going to. Oh, wow. He just canceled his Baneling Nest. Oh, my god. This is so awesome. The, the level of decision making that we're seeing here, you know, he's in a lot of trouble. And he was like, OK, I'm going to go Banelings and keep on trying to bust. And then he realized, no, actually, that's a terrible idea. And instead, Nesty is going to go ahead and expand. This is the type of decision that you almost never see made in this game. Yeah, tasteless. normally you see people panic. They start to just get aggressive, get all in. Um, and in fact, he's not going to bite yet. As you said, he's going to go over the expansion. Probably drone up. He's just trying to control the scouting SCVs coming out here. Of That's course, right. Taren does not know about this expansion. That's right. You may be expecting an all-in. Uh, you know, he's going to keep on making Marines, keep on spreading them out. 
And now he scans and sees it. Smart move. These guys are both playing so well, Tasis. I'm very happy. Yeah. I'm a very happy boy right now. You're a happy nerd? I am. This is a pretty epic match that we've seen already. Very back and forth. And he is going to make the bailings nest now Yep. at a more appropriate time. That's right. Now, the one scary thing is the Marines, they are coming, uh -oh. Tasis. The March of the Marines. Now, he may not have enough to hold this off. He has to make roaches to try to hold this off. Allowing the roaches to take damage first so the lings can slip in there. Yep. And these Marines, they may in fact go ahead and take out this hatchery, and that would be not good for Nesty. He only has about maybe five seconds to decide if he wants to cancel that hatchery. Is he going to do it? Oh, man, I think he's not going to do it. He's going to let it stay. He's that realizing he has. he has to stop this attack now. He does have more roaches now in his main base. But there are also more Marines here with the Terran army. Oh my, oh my. And here he comes. He's got those more roaches. They're coming down. It's time for him to try to push back these Marines. And it looks like he will. <coughs> Terran may be gearing up here for a second attack. He is cranking out a lot more Marines. This is, of course, not allowing the Zerg to make drones because they make all their units from the same structure, the hatchery. Yeah. And that means that they really, I mean, the more pressure you apply to them, the less workers they can get. And what that means in the late game is that the less workers they have, uh, they don't have an army to deal with yours. You know, it looks like right now Nesty has decided to go back into an all-in yeah. and support this decision, Paces. He's in a terrible spot right now. Uh, just great play so far by Foxer. The pressure has been just perfect so far. Now we see Banelinks are on the way. He's going to go for one of these bunkers. You can see he's already salvaging one. Nesty actually going to make a bunker here on low ground. Looks like he might be preparing for a slow push across the map. Yeah. Probably thinking that Nesty like. is going to drone up, but actually Nesty is not doing that whatsoever. Now, the problem is Siege Mode is about to finish. He's got his second factory being uh, going up right now to produce more Siege Shanks. Siege Shanks in Siege Mode, Tasteless. Roaches, Lings, Banelings without speed. Oh, they, oh all, they all just die. They just die. And this could look pretty gross in a moment here. We're going to have to see, though. One tank sieged. Here we go. When these bailings finish, he's going to do it. I think he even sees what's going on right now. And here he goes. Roach is first to try to take any shots. Here come the banelings. And, oh, that siege tank. They are doing so much damage. Those siege tanks running back is Boxer. Back past the bunker. Trying to break through. Can he do it here? He's got a lot of roaches left, but that siege tank doing just so much damage. Here come the SCVs blocking the roaches and repairing the siege tank. And I think we're going to see a GG from Nesty any second. Wow. He barely held that off, but of course, with everything else coming out of these factories and barracks, he's able to replenish his army quite easily. As you can see, Zerg, four drones here. And um, oh, what, man. about seven, uh, 18 drones over there. Yeah, this, this is just looking completely unwinnable from the Zerg side. Uh, Nesty is looking like he is in so much trouble here. A Zerg. very hard map. He's getting so close with those bunkers. Tasteless, that was quite right. It is a slow push with bunkers. He's just, he realizes how far ahead he is. He says, you know what, all I need to do is just push over very slowly and kill Nesty. Nesty is running out of oxygen fast, and pretty soon he's going to suffocate here as these Terran uh, structures, the, the bunkers, even having uh, supply depots here to kind of interfere with anything, trying to get in front of the siege tank. He will eventually reach this point over here where he can hit the hatchery down here. Yeah, that's quite true. He can just float a barracks over there at that point. And this is just like an impenetrable defense. Right now, Nesty needs either mutalisks or needs drops, but unfortunately, he's just started his lair. So really, he has no speed, no mobility, no way to get around this ridiculous push we are seeing from Boxer. It's just such a deadly strong push. Uh, a beautiful decision by him to, to do a push like this. You can see he even peeks up here, takes out a uh, creep tumor. And I, I give this game no more than five minutes. Oh, absolutely. Look at this. He's pushing forward now. It's going to be, I mean, here he goes. He is ending this tasteless. With just banelings left against this many siege tanks, I don't think those banelings can even kill these siege tanks if they group up in a ball for him. Yeah, th there's just no way. Oh, you can no. see he's using the Marines to spot here. And I think that's basically it. Nice, nice. There's that Marine spread we know so well from Boxer. Yeah, and GG. GG. Wow. Boxer. Wow, wow, wow. Going wow, up wow. three to two. Damn. Boxer is wicked. He is good, man.
That kid is such a baller, man. I love his play style. Nesty. We predicted him to be doing a lot better in this. Yeah, yeah. But he just did manage to do it thus far. And this is getting pretty bad here. You know, it's, uh, well, it's three to two. Or, yeah, three to yeah, two. Yeah, three to two. So it is pretty close. We're going to be going into game six. Yeah. Which is going to be on Zelnog Caverns. A pretty good map overall. It's a great map. We're going to have to see exactly what Nesty wants to do on there. Yeah. Exactly what Foxer wants to do. And, uh, I don't know, man. Foxer's really, he is playing to impress tonight. Yeah. His, his build orders are so wisely chosen. Right. He's scanning at all the right times. He's really defending a lot better than we've seen him defend in the past against Kyrix. Right. And ST, you know, he's switching it up quite a bit as well. Both these players throwing everything in their arsenal at each other. So far, Fox are on top. Can ST come back, though? Uh, you know, the next two maps, Zelnager Caverns, Metalopolis. Two maps that ST has practiced on quite a bit. Of yeah. course, these are GSL qualifier maps, maps that we see in almost every round of the GSL. Yeah, that's true. It's a very, um, very played out map. Yeah. It's an old map, too. Even though StarCraft 2 is so new, compared to some of these other maps like Jungle Basin or something, Yeah, this is a pretty old map. So if Nesty can manage to take down Zenlog Caverns, we're going to finish off the series on Metalopolis, which everyone pretty much agrees, the most balanced map that there is. Yeah, and a map you want to be Zergon. Yeah, I mean, Zerg Absolutely. players love to play on Metalopolis because sometimes you get very far away spawning points. You can get that third base up pretty easily. And that's what Zerg players normally like, especially macro Zergs like Nest T. He's uh, definitely a late game Zerg. Right. It's very true, everything you said. Now, I don't know if we're going to go to a break yet. Uh, we haven't been informed yet. Um, the players might demand a restroom break. Yeah, I, I believe not, that we are going to be going yeah, to a break. Yeah, we'll probably go to a break. Um, so you will have a chance to get some more food, maybe microwave a Hot Pocket, you know? It's true. Some Open cheese up, sticks. Get another I'll bag of pretzels. Cheese sticks, cheese yeah. sticks are quite good. Yeah, they can be quite good. Get one of those big, uh, you know, uh, New York-style pretzels with the salt in them. And, um, yeah, get some more food. Get some more coffee if you're sleepy. Green tea. We'll be back soon. This is Tasteless and Artosis at the GSL with Boxer against Nest Tea.